Today I'm going to show you how to set up some remote access to your arcade cabinet, your arcade one up cabinet, which is running Android. There's lots of ways you can do this, but I like doing everything through SSH. So we're going to set up Termux and SSH. This is basically an Android tutorial. We're just going to apply it to a cabinet. So the first thing you need to do is uh, plug in a flash drive uh, that has been formatted for the device with the APK. We're going to hit Windows N on a keyboard that we also have hooked up, and we are going to click our little settings icon here. Uh, next, you're going to go to storage, and we're going to move to the USB drive that we have the APK on. Once we do that, we're going to navigate to the folder. I put it in the downloads folder on the USB flash drive. So double click on that, and then click on the APK for Termux. I've actually downloaded two different files here, but just click on the one that you downloaded. F-Droid is a great place to get this APK. It's going to warn you that you're doing this from an unknown source. Just click continue and install and then go through that process. Once it's done installing, you can click done or you can click open. Oh, it's gonna ask you for ac uh, access to storage. You're gonna confirm that because we do wanna access the storage. That's kind of why we're setting this up or at least one of the reasons. Okay, once it's installed, we can go ahead and click open, which will open up Termux. I will take a moment to load up all the default settings. And then at this point, we want to make sure that we have Wi-Fi on. So what we're gonna do is hit Windows N on our keyboard again. Now I set up Wi-Fi when I first set up this device, but I have disabled it since then. I just click there to turn it back on. And at this point we can PKG update and and PKG upgrade. Uh, and this should update all our package lists and upgrade all the packages. Now, this will take a few minutes, especially since it's your first time running it. Uh, and then after that, we're gonna to wanna to install our OpenSSH server. Uh, and the package, uh, you might think, would be OpenSSH server or OpenSSHD. Uh, but what we're going to do here is when you try to run that, it might tell you the first time you run this that you want to change repos. So you can run Termux change dash repos. Uh, you can go manual select it. I'm just going to select all mirrors. And for some reason, it uh, picked out a uh, server in Austria for me. I'm not sure why. Doesn't really matter. I'm not gonna be installing a lot of packages. But again, uh, we're going to then, again, if you want, run uh, PKG update and PKG upgrade just to make sure that all the packages are updated now that we changed our repositories. Then we're going to do uh, PKG install. Uh, again, I tried OpenSSHD, but it's just OpenSSH uh, with no D. So then I tried OpenSSHD, it's, or just SHD. It is <laughs> PKG install OpenSSH is the name of the package. Uh, and agree to the settings. It will go through, download those packages, install it, and set up an encryption key for you. And then at this point, you're going to need to set up a password because by default, Android devices don't have uh, passwords for the user here. So you're just gonna type in P-A-S-S-W-D and then type in your password twice. Uh, probably has to be a minimum of six characters by default. But remember what you type, you can always change it later. Uh, and new password was successfully set up. Now we run sshd to enable that, and I'm gonna check my IP, uh, but you need to install the package pkg install IP route two to install the IP application. At this point, once it's installed, you can run the IP space A command again to see what your IP is. Of course, you can always go into the Android settings and see uh, under network what your IP address is. Uh, once you have your IP address, uh, we also need to set up the storage. So termux-setup-storage, that will allow you to access the storage on the Android system. And you can see if I CD storage in our home directory, you can see that we have folders here. Shared would be your main uh, storage for Android files uh, that you may want to push to the device. Here I'm going to check out the size of the hard drive. Now I have uh, the internal storage and I have the flash drive installed. The flash drive is 128 gigs. But you can see the internal here, it says that it's 1.2 really. I think that uh, it might be like a four gig. Uh, I saw at one point, but I'm going to put in a 32 gig flash drive. Uh, again, Windows N to bring down this menu and I'm going to click to format that. Now in a previous video with the USB drive, I did portable storage. For this, I'm going to do use tablet storage. This will basically kind of integrate it so it's seen as part of your Android storage instead of a separate piece of storage. Uh, this is good in some cases because you can actually install uh, applications to that so your applications aren't filling up the internal storage. It told me that my uh, SD card was a little slow, but I said, continue anyway, 
move the content, and here it's going to move some of the applications and settings for applications over to the SD card. Uh, of course, don't remove the SD card while you're doing this, but this is going to be a card that's in there all the time and basically just bumps up the internal storage uh, to the 32 gigs plus the internal storage. Uh, once we're done with that, we can go back to here and I can then um, pull down our menu again, Windows N once again, and I'm going to go to the settings gear. And in here, I'm going to scroll down and I am going to go to storage and just check. You can see that uh, I have 3.66 gigs of um, 32 or I guess 36 it says. So the four internal and then the 32 I added. Now I'm on my desktop machine. We set up SSH. So in on Linux, on any uh, File manager, ssh forward slash, uh, colon forward slash, forward slash, the IP address. And for Termux, it's 8022. Uh, and that will allow you to mount that drive. And then here, I can just drag and drop any files from my computer to the remote computer. Of course, we could always use the shell and push stuff over. But I'm going to go to retroarch.com, scroll down to in the download section to where it says Android. And I'm going to download the file. Now, at first time, I downloaded 64 bit because I just assumed the system was 64 bit. Uh, but then I went to install it and it failed. And I just assumed that it was probably because it's not a 64 bit system. So I checked, I went back, I downloaded the 32 bit uh, APK copied that over and RetroArch installed no problem. And that was it. Uh, again, this is not specific to this arcade cabinet. This is how you would set up uh, SSH server for sharing or remote access on any Android device. But since this device is running Android, this is the way you go about doing it. And now not only can I copy files over, I can also get a shell on the system and change things. Uh, now, when you restart the system, the SSH server is going to get shut off uh, and you can go back into Termux and turn it back on. There is also another application called Termux um, boot that you can also install. And in there you can have scripts run at boot time and you can enable SSH uh, server to start at boot. Uh, but that's it. I uh, thank you for watching. Please visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. There's a link in the description. As always, I hope that you have a great day.